Of this clause number three, mm -hmm. the electors shall meet in their respective states and vote by ballot uh, for two persons. Yeah. Of one of whom one at least shall not be an inhabitant of the same state uh, with themselves. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is, this is an interesting concept because technically, mm -hmm. each state um, has the availability of naming a person that did not get the most votes of the citizens of the individual states. <laughs> but in this system of democracy, yeah. You as electors could all decide, well, we're going to vote for the person that was a candidate because of the state legislatures, right, but didn't receive the popular vote because we think that they bought the election. <laughs> so we're going to all cast our vote in the other 49 states, yes, for whom we want to see as being the president. <laughs> Now, it removes a lot of the idea, right, that you can buy an election. Yes, yes, yes. Now, for those electors that are appointed mm -hmm. um, in, in this system, yeah, you could decide the president and vice president because you cast one of your two votes for a candidate for office in your individual state, but then you can look at the other 49 states and say, well, I'm going to vote for that person from that state because I think they should be president. Now, when you think about it, there's a tremendous amount of power in being an actual elector yes. from any state. So, now, um, well, the electors are obligated to consider the candidates for office of every state for the president and vice president. And as an elector in the Constitution, you can vote for any candidate for office that state law says receive the necessary number of votes of the residents of the state to be considered a candidate. Oh, <laughs> now I don't know if that's how the law is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think we've gotten away from the original design of the executive branch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as a citizen, mm -hmm. I think that the actual votes of the electors of state of Washington, they probably cast their votes for only the residents of the individual state. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say mm -hmm, I decide to sue the governors of all 50 states. Yes. And then the president of the Senate, known as Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Now, I would say uh -huh, that it would invalidate the presidential candidacy. Yes. A uh, governor, Jay Inslee. <laughs> it would invalidate the availability of Joe Biden running for president. Yes, he does. Now, I'm wanting to use the court system. <laughs> Oh, did you want to say I was crazy today? Oh, <laughs> well, why don't we look at the decriminalization of marijuana? Pooch. As I remember it, there was a 25% tax on the wholesale sale of marijuana products. Yes. And there was a 25% tax on the, on the retail sale of marijuana products. Yes. Because I remember approximately six years ago being at my grandmother's house reading why the state legislature decriminalized marijuana. <laughs> Now, my thought was that if your taxation revenue, mm -hmm, why don't you get me the taxes on all marijuana sales and all licenses and employees of every location where the manufacturer, uh -huh, wholesale manufacturer of marijuana products or the retail sale of marijuana products. Yes. And then 20 miles down in the actual communication system of each of those locations. <laughs> now, let's say state legislatures. Please! decided to disagree. If your projections of actual taxation of marijuana did not fit what was presented to the voters at the time of the decriminalization of marijuana products, I would say that state legislatures could personally be sued for not acknowledging that the basis of their decriminalization of certain crimes was not fact-based, but was some sort of... See, my thought was, yes, because in 1980s, I, I, well, I did try the new marijuana products. I didn't like them at all. <laughs> That's why I don't smoke marijuana. Yes. And I would encourage you, yes, if you're an American citizen, why don't you vote in the next election for any person, yes, that according to state law mm -hmm, 
would be considered a candidate for the office of president and vice president. Yes. Not just because they're in the voters' ballot, though it's nice that they're there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. State law requires a certain percentage of the actual vote to be considered a candidate for the office of president and vice president. Yes. So why don't you cast your vote for any candidate Yes, that has the necessary number of votes? Now, I know we have like a general election and then a primary election or primary and general. I don't know exactly how they work it. Yes, but do the research about those that could be elected president and vice president and do vote. Yes, the voters pamphlet. See, I didn't want to be influenced by the advertising now. No, no. I was somebody that would read the voters' pamphlet, and I made my decisions based upon my personal beliefs, values, and education. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now, let's say that you, the voter, yeah. you do vote, but you find out well, which of the individual candidates is going to be considered an actual candidate for president of the United States because of the vote of the residents of the individual state, and you cast your vote. I want every American citizen to vote in this next election. <laughs> then we look at the electors. <laughs> we look at the state laws that have obligated them to vote for the popular, <laughs> the individual that receives the, 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 the largest number of votes. <laughs> then we look at our electors voting for candidates from other states, as the Constitution says. <laughs> 